to check the, our primary notification. So uh, let's continue. Let's start the query optimization and the processor. Um, I think this week and the next week, uh, Monday, we probably cover the, this topic. And if we have a time, we go for the, another topic, another component in the uh, database system, okay, DBMS, so like the transaction management, and so on, as much information as possible until the end of the semester. Then keep going your keep doing your homework and the project is the last phase so you need to create your application so even though this is not the programming class so but uh, based on your experience on Python or Java or the others the any programming and software engineering please to uh, create the, your application program and, but the more important thing is uh, as a backend you need to use uh, MySQL database create on the GCP or AWS that's a bit time. So you can uh, utilize the uh, programming technique like the dynamic SQL and the not please use more the dynamic SQL that will be based on your application. Right? By selecting the menu, you can uh, dynamically change your the SQL. The idea is uh, that you need to use the if case or the if then uh, if there's any input you can uh, assemble the uh, SQL string. Okay. So today we are going to talk about the Theory processor and theory optimizer, mostly theory processor. But uh, before we start, I'd like to very, very briefly uh, introduce about the compiler. Okay? So, what is a compiler? It sounds high level language, it's a machine language. Yes. So, from the high level language, like the C or the Java, but this one is it's a machine language, high level language and low level language. So any any of this did you use? So x86 the, in the microprocessor class you learned about assembly, right? So this is uh, x86 and uh, and the ARM spot. You can realize this is based on what processor. Okay, depend on processor. So which means the Intel or the IBM not right now. IBM is no longer manufacturer. Company. They gave up the throughout the HSR, the all the manufacturing part at the power PC or the uh, Lenovo or the Ed server to other. Right now, it's only they declare the IBM is the service company. They are struggling right now. <laughs> it's the, but uh, probably that I believe that is a good choice. But anyway, this is a uh, processor. So each processor has what? Instruction, number of instruction. So mostly they, the, if you have the microprocessor, the controller, so that control the server, okay, OpenCM or the something the controller, they have a very limited number of instruction, okay. A B computer has the 16, uh, the 10, 20 instruction will be fine, and also remote control, the, they use the uh, controller. Processor, it has a very simple, uh, it's a less than 10 instruction. But the general computing, for general computing, the processor, they have the 100, not more than the 200, mostly less than the 200 the instruction. So it's a machine language. So our goal is to translate the, from high level language to this one. There are three main steps, okay? Most part is a front hand. Front end part means it's a the, like the, uh, the translate the, this one into the low uh, row form of the such uh, the machine language. Before this one, it's uh, like the analyze. So for example, so there is a this one. Can I move? So this is an example of the code like the if that if code. You see Java or the C plus plus whatever. So it will be analyzed like this because computer CPU processor cannot understand that this one. It should be changed like this. So this is the front end part to deal with the higher level source code. Then the 
middle level. It's mostly the middle end means is uh, analysis and the optimizer. The meaning is after we the change the form of the high level languages into the such a uh, tree, then the what well, is a parsing form. The, the parsing form will be further analyzed based on the performance and the optimizer. Then the in the back end the finally <coughs> match the convert the such a, the analyzed form into the instruction. Finally, we have the such a the machine language. Then this one is a binary form, executor file that will be loaded into the memory. That is called the what? Process. So finally, we can create the process. Process is the execution form of your of such a the compiled program. So that is the very basic fundamental the logistic of the how we can the use computer research but uh, nowadays we have really a lot of abstraction level even clouding sometimes we, we call the serverless the environment so we forgot about the without this so we cannot use computer system so compiler is uh, so compiler their way to search uh, the from here to here so we can uh, use computer resources through the compiler. So in general, there are several steps. Most uh, compiler has uh, such a uh, step. So in the front end part is called the lexical analysis. Lexical analysis is in other words is a tokenized because no way to so I think that even human being can human perception through the uh, literature is the same thing. So when we start to learn the new language, like the, even the your mother tongue, so you start from one, word by word, vocabulary by vocabulary. So your mom said there is a, uh, something mama or the dad or such a thing, basic word. Then eventually it will be sentence. At that time, so two word or three word the sentence without any the rule or without any grammar syntax. But the, eventually you will have the something rule or syntax to form a sentence it's like that. The first step is finding the word by word, keyword. So it's tokenizer. That's the only way computer can understand the, your input, the, the uh, program. Then the check the syntax. So this one is called the scanner or the tokenizer. Then the, but the, that doesn't mean even though all word by word they are validate the word, that doesn't mean it's a perfect, it's okay in terms of a syntax, grammar. So we need to check the grammar. If that is called the parser. So from time to time we use the name of a parsing or the parser. Okay? Parser means from the something input we need to uh, have the more digitized form. Uh, the computer can understand that. And finally, we can have the intermediate the code. It's a, it's a before the binary. <coughs> so it's not the check the validating or the permission or the data type. Whether sometimes even though grammatically it's a perfect, but uh, this should be straight, not integer. So some of the compiler use auto caching, but uh, we need to check the such a thing or even the performance. So whether the loop how to access the object, the, is, uh, the point, or the, such as uh, the optimization will be considered, then that will be the uh, mid end that I introduced, then finally we can the translate the, into the instruction code. That's the back and finally we can have the machine code, the executor file, and compile the code. So this is the overall thing. Okay? So overall thing, the overall process of the how compiler is working. It's a very interesting the subject, but it's not easy. You need to understand definitely the hardware part and also the front end, your software, the, like the more data structure. And uh, this one will be implemented by the programming also. So we can use the high level language, even Java has provided uh, such as uh, uh, Java, uh, the parser or Java lexical analysis, which means you can the uh, code. Uh, you can develop the compiler using Java, but if you are considering performance, so C language is much more popular. So this is the, uh, the compiler. The reason why the, I'm introducing this one, what about the C code? 
a structured purely language. It's also the program, right? So program language, this is even the high level program language. So EBMS should conduct the exact same process when a user submit the uh, theory. So before we start the query process of query, the optimizer, I'd like to overview the how your query is a process. For your reminder, so what is this? Do you remember the beginning of first class? Ideas. Idea. Anyone who remember what is this? Computer. It's our computer. Server. It has the CPU processor and also we have the memory, okay, primary storage, and also we have the, such a, the secondary storage. Sometimes it can be SSD, it can be hard hard disk drive, or the or so they are connected to the bus and the, each of the device has their the controller, like the, for example disk controller or memory controller and like that. Okay, so this is an overview of our the computer system. Then, EBMS is what? What is a EBMS? Storage. Storage? Not the, it's the computer behind the storage. Computer behind the storage? It's a software. It's a program, just like the, your uh, email pro program or Microsoft Word program where the app is a program, database management system. That's not mean it's a hardware or a system, it's a software, which means you need to compile and uh, full compile, Oracle program compile. We are going to use that the program by study about executing the such a program. So, but uh, I know the DBMS is not like the general purpose, the application program, it's kind of in between. I mentioned the several times, the reason is that some part of the DBMS, or MySQL Informix, such as the DBMS system, had what? The operating system functionality, like the memory management, and the process management, and monitoring, and such a thing. So it has the, such a operating system functionality. Somebody says it's kind of limited, but still, DBMS is the database memory system, it's the, epic, the, it's the program. Okay, process. So, which means we need to start. So, mostly database, when we start the database, we call the startup the database. Even Oracle used the startup the command to start the database. Okay, we need to create, the, we need to, we can start the database. So, what happened when you start the EBMS, like the MySQL or Oracle? or a SQL server, what happened in terms of an operating system? So what if so you have your project, the software engineering class or OOP class, you have project, so you create your program, right? So when you start your program, what happened? Run. Running means what? Execute. It's the same thing, but happen in terms of operating system. Changing the code into machine memory. It's already changed, right? It's a compile, right? If, if you double click the, any application, any app, what happens? It's a RAM. It's a RAM, which means it's a process. The process will be created. Creating process means we reserve, find, the memory storage because our DBMS software is on the hard So I spend a lot of money to buy the Oracle, the DBMS, the software. They send the CD or the something in the cloud, the install, whatever. But this one is on the secondary storage. So if we start such a database, process will be created as it is. The just like the, when you start the, any application program, okay, on your the operating system, on your computer. 
So it creating the process. However, the DBMS has the most of DBMS has a lot of process because it's a very complicated the uh, software. Okay, unlike the other general purpose the, uh, application program. For example, one is in charge of database write, so DB write. One, the other one is log write, and uh, another one is the monitoring. So another one. So there are number of most of DBMS has number of processes. So they are working together. It's like the cooperative processes. If you uh, take the operating system class, so almost many of application work together. Okay, it's a cooperative the process. So we have a number of process and the memory. Okay. In addition to the creating process, DBMS also has another very important task when you start the DBMS, that is, reserve the memory. Why we reserve the memory? Do you remember? The main purpose of using DBMS is access the data very fast. How can we speed up to access the data? There are a bunch of different ways, not a bunch, but uh, several different ways, indexing and uh, so on. Uh, one of the ways is cache. So we can use area, some specific area, reserved area uh, for cache purpose. So this one is called buffer in database. So we need to manage this area. It's called the buffer management. So buffer management is a very important task of the DBMS. Just uh, one megabyte, two megabyte. So if you check the requirement of the Oracle DBMS for installation, they ask at least a four gigabyte or eight gigabyte. The bigger is the better, right? But uh, we cannot reserve all the memory for the cache, right? So operating system use, DBMS system use, uh, there are many processes on your operating system, so that can be used for this. Also, they are going to use the uh, memory for general purpose or the other purpose. So usually recommend 40 to 50% of the PC card, the memory for Oracle database, minimum 4 gigabyte and the so on. The bigger is the better if you are using the, uh, the bigger size of the memory. So it's actually huge. So that is the reason uh, the D database server need bigger size of memory, usually, okay, most of the case. Even sometimes we can uh, create a table on the memory. It's a memory-based database. So map cache is a one example. Map cache is a database name, DBMS name. It's a no one of the NoSQL database. So, in short, when you start the, your DBMS system, creating number of processes. Each of them has a specific task. And also, at the same time, we reserve the memory area. For example, Oracle called this the buffer as the SGA. For example, it's not general term, but the Oracle used this one. So many of the DBMS use the same name. So shared global area. It's which means it's a buffer or a cache, <laughs> like that. So, currently the DBMS is running. One of the process, I'm going to use the process here, one of the process will be used for communication network. So, to nowadays, I think the beginning of the semester, I mentioned about the different computing environment. Then, we have to centralize the system we have the database in centralized, right? And then this one will be downsized. So we have the last size of the downsized the DB database, but we have like the, this one, client, client server environment. The server is database, we have the database client. So right now you are using the client module and actually your server is on the cloud, like that. How can you connect? Do the network. So, which means, so what kind of a protocol are you using for such a network right now? TCP, HTTP, 
is the is on the TCP. TCP is a transparent layer, it's a layer four, and then on top of that we have an application layer. HTTP is the application layer. Right? So we can use a TCP. For example, most of them nowadays they are using TCP. One of the example of the, such a TCP application is a socket program. Okay? So you have a socket program server and the uh, the sender and receiver. If they are matching for the IP and the port number, you guys can communicate. Similarly, when you start the DBMS, if you allow such a the client server environment, most of them, most of the DBMS allow, which means server process should run on your DBMS. Then they are waiting. So, for example, Oracle use 1524 port number. The SQL server use like the MySQL. I forgot the whole of them, but you can check. They are a well-known port number. So this port number is operate for the client. So let's say that we have the thousand port number. So through the thousand port, they are waiting. So this operating system has the host name like the, this one, 10001. So using this IP address port number, we are able to access the, this server and this service. And this one, based on the task request, you can write the data, read the data, and return the data like that. Or sometimes create the table. So we have client, database client. It can be your PC, much, much smaller than the server. And this one has an application client program. So to connect the, this one. So you can connect, for example, the MySQL. In case of MySQL, how can you connect the database on the GCP or the AWS? You specify host name, right? So you copy IP address of your the server, right? Then mostly you are using default port number, so you don't have to. But if you change the port number, you need to specify that port number, right? So then username and password, like the root or the other user, if you already create, you are able to access. So it's a connected using the disk. Most of the DBMS use a TCP so for your the, uh, client server environment. So client, client server CS, the communication, so they are using exactly not the same syntax, but the basically the same. Oracle use the same thing and the Informix use the same thing and the most of my the uh, the DBMS use the same host name, username, password, then you are able to connect. Then at that time, what kind of the database application tool you are using as a client? MySQL is MySQL. This is a client program. Okay? And the Oracle has SQL Plus. DB2 use DB2, like this. So it's an application, client to module, client to program to connect the database. Server and client, it's a program. So let's say that this is MySQL, so we have the file the right now connected to the database. So I'm going to select implode. So this is a SQL. So we are going to see when you type, submit the, this SQL language, what's going on? Until I return the data, like the ID, the name, and address, like the, it will be written, right? So suppose that we already create. So database is running, and uh, uh, this one. Before you submit the, this query, this one is the, in terms of a compiler. It's a high level language or the machine language? It's a high level. You cannot, if you simply, if you understand in English, say it's a high level language. The machine code, like the assembly, it's not easy to directly understand. Eventually, binary code, no way. But there exists. There are some, I have seen the, some uh, 
It's a from the company sometimes if your software or the server has a problem, they directly see the binary code, then realize which one is which, they change. But the most of people cannot. So this is a high level language, which means human perception. We need to compile, okay? In database, the, we are not going to use, not going, we are not going to say it's a compiler instead, this one is interpreter. The main difference is, So this is end of statement. It's a statement by statement, you compile. Basically, they are doing the exactly same thing, but the compiler actually compile, translate all together, procedure apart. On the other hand, the interpreter is kind of the, the let the, think about the Google Translator. Google Translator is not translating entire textbook. Instead, so it's a one sentence by sentence, word by word. It's a compile. It's the same thing. So that is the reason most of the such a, the, uh, the interpreter required to specify where is the end of a statement. Then this means it's a, that at the end, you need to compile, interpret. So this is an interpreter. So, but the behind is the same thing as the compiler. So, as we have seen in the compiler, what's going on when you compile the, your source code? What happens when you compile your statement, interpret? Lexical analysis. Cut by the word. Okay? If there is any mistake, the misspelling, definitely error from the this step. It's a lexical analysis or tokenizer. Then, what is the next step? Parsing. So, parsing means that the, we can the build a, such a abstract tree, like that. So in terms of syntax, whether, for example, uh, insert, uh, the create, create the EMP table. In terms of the lexical analysis, it's okay. So this one is a user. But the, in terms of the syntax, parsing, this is not. It's not in order, right order. So we need to consider the syntax to parse. Okay? Then also we need to do validating. So validating means whether this uh, the employee, there is an employee, but whether you have the permission or not. Such a validating. Okay? So this lexical analysis, the scanning, scanner, and the parser and validate little bit simpler than general compiler because this one is interpreter specified for the SQL language. So this is the step. After this step, we are going to, if you remember the step in the compiler, it's an intermediate form. Okay. So intermediate form. So intermediate form is a kind of binary code. Binary code on the SQL. This one will be submitted to the server. Server will receive. Then first thing is this binary form. Sometimes it's called a P code. I don't know why it's called a P code. It's binary form. Will be stored at the cache area. Why? Same purpose as the cache. Why you use cache? We use. Yes. Think about uh, your application. You are developing your application program during the page file. So you have the phone and the submit. When you submit, you create a SQL, right? Then the send to the server. How many times? A lot of time this the, uh, query will be used, which means most of the time it's the same SQL. Depending on the value, it may be changing most of the time. The hundred millions of users would like to uh, book a ticket for the, which, who is the most popular singer? Like the BTS, do you know? Who is the BTS? I do not know, but it's, he's a, they are from Korea, K-pop, but uh, so millions of tickets will be sold uh, in an hour like that. So their query will be the same. We cannot do the, this step whenever they click. Instead, we store the such a code on the memory cache that the we use. Okay? That is the reason this one is for management. It's really important. 
to keep a better performance. So then, and if this one, this is the first time, which means if you cannot find a, such a P code, you need to save and process. One of this process will process. Then the next step is the next step is the we need as we discussed last time, last time the when we travel three the different city, there are huge number of different cases. Same thing. So let's say the employee is here. Even though we are going to access one table, so employee. So we can use the brute force way. Also, we can use if this file is ordered, the binary search. If we have the secondary index like the B plus 3. Even B plus 3 indexed by what? The EMPI. Or the something different. There are many different ways. So query optimizer would like to find the fastest way. Fastest way to access the this employee table. So output of query uh, this step is called the query process, including this one. Then the query optimizer is to find the fastest way, fastest route to access the data. Then output of query optimizer is for the execution plan, just like the itinerary. So when you book a ticket, okay, it shows the really similar as your the travel plan and the employee access employee like the full table scan. Full table scan means brute force way. For example, if you are the using the index, it's like the using primary key like that. It shows the uh, such a plan. If you are joined two table like the access the employee using primary key, then the join the with the department using the employee ID and the DNO is called the D number like that. It shows us such a plan to access. Okay? This is the execution plan. So using the this execution plan, one of the processor who is in charge of reading the data, then using this plan, access the data. But even before access the data, DBMS find whether it's cached or not. Okay. So if cached, we don't have to access the disk, the secondary storage, just to return from the memory. Its ratio is really high, 97, 98% of the data. That's the reason we need a bigger size. Most of data should be cached. Okay. That makes sense. So as I mentioned several times, so it's the same thing on your computer. Your computer, do you use all the files on your hard disk drive or SSD? No. Only few of them. Half is called the hot file. Hot file is less than 10%. It's just a, it's general rule is 20 to uh, 20 and 80. 20 we access. 80 is archive purpose. But in real life, it's less than 10%. Okay, which means if we can store the such a 10% of data on the memory, it's a fresh. Same thing on the database. So if there are images, we can access the data uh, the, from the memory. Otherwise, we need to go so, uh, to the secondary storage. Then the, we have the data. This data will be returned to the client and the list as a form of what? Relation, group of data. So group of data will be written. That is the main difference between memory-based approach, like your program, versus the DBMS. DBMS consider data as a what? group. So if you are using Java for your application, it's a result set. It's a set, OK? We didn't use such a set of data. Instead, we are using list or the array So for the such a group of data. But result set is kind of mimicking the relational data is that access one by one and return from your application program. This is the overall thing. 
what's going on when you submit a query. Okay? Then, what we're going to do is we are going to focus on the such a query optimizer the today and the next class. How database DBMS find the best path to access the data. Okay? Simple idea is what? We are going, there are two ways. One is host based optimizer. It's called the CBO. And another one is a rule based optimizer. It's called the RBO. So the difference between the rule based optimizer and the course based optimizer, then let's go back to the travel. Okay. So when you book a ticket, so you probably search the Google. Okay. So I have a rule. If when I travel to LA, if there is a flight, I'm going to use the flight. If there is no flight, my next priority is the the train. Third one, if none of them are available, is the drive. The last option is work. This is my rule always. So no matter how much it costs, it doesn't matter. Whether there exists or not. It's my criteria. Okay? I need a flight if available. If not, train like that. Even though it's millions of dollars, I can pay. Right? So this is called rule based. So rule based optimizer use the list of the rule to access the data. For example, if there is primary key, okay? It's a primary key, then primary key is a usually fast. It's so our rule. So we can use primary key. Next, secondary index. Next, then last one is brute force, right? One by one. So this is our rule. So if there is any, for example, where condition, like the primary key is ID, ID is equal to one, 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 then no matter how it costs, how long it takes, because the condition, where condition has a primary key index column, so we are going to select this one. If not, there is no such a well condition. There is no rule satisfied with that the query. Only available is brute force. Then the, this one will be selected, even though it could store one. So rule based. Okay. On the other hand, cost based optimizer is we calculate the cost. So our goal of the booking a ticket is either to minimize my cost. My cost is Mostly we consider money to spend. Okay? So for example, the when you travel, so fly, when you search, usually one connection, two connections, so it will be cheaper, but it takes a long time. But you need to think about the what will be the real cost. It's very complicated. My hourly rate is hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, and if I spend three hours for stopover, so but you don't want. So you simplify the cost like the dollar only. So whenever you find the cheapest one, I'm going to select. Even drive is cheaper, I'm going to select this. Even the working is cheaper, I'm going to select this. So only money. So similarly, in the database optimizer, our cost, do you remember the, what is the, our cost? There are a lot of cost criteria, CPU, memory, and uh, bottle the network latency, but our main cost criteria is time, what the resource, memory, this I access the hard disk drive. It's the most expensive, especially database use a lot of this secondary storage, right? Your program like the. OP or the software engineering, most of your data on the memory. So you don't have to worry about too much I.O. You can most, or on the other hand, so you'd better focus on the algorithm, like the complexity, 
or a big annotation algorithm. But database, we use a secondary story. This is really, really the expensive than any other research. So we ignore any other research except I, disk I especially. The disk I.O. is the most dominant factor to cost. So cost-based optimizer calculate number of I.O. One more thing. When you count the number of I.O., how can you count? count? It's the block by block. Do you remember the last two weeks? We calculate the, uh, the, we do the evaluation by calculating number of I.O. So in this the database optimizer, we are going to also use the, the such a number of I/O to calculate the number of I/O for cost space optimizer. So which one is better, cost space optimizer or rule based optimizer? Using both depends on which one. Depends on mostly. Space the optimizer is working well because it uses statistic and uh, you can save a time and uh, you can uh, build uh, such a uh, the course based optimizer. But problem is it's more complicated. We are going to see how to calculate the course, but uh, there are many many different factors. However, on the other hand, the IBC is very simple. Check whether it's okay. Yes, select it this way. Otherwise, next, next. Right? It's just simple, but not always accurate. Okay? So nowadays, current debalance system, the database company, they ask or force the older user to use this one. When I use the database memory system, like the Oracle, Informix, DB2, I have used the DS3 uh, the 20 years ago. At the time, the cost base optimizer is 70% accurate. The other 30% query is not very accurate. But nowadays, it's a higher to the almost 90. Over 90. However, still, less than 10% is not very accurate. So, the EBMS, the vendor, they provide a way for user, developer, invite, inter, the intercept the decision of the course based optimizer, which means you can force it. Course based optimizer suggests the take the flight. But I believe in this case probably the driving is faster. Then you can put your ask force. The DBMS use the mind, the decision. Like the using the driving, you need to drive to access the this data. So it's called a hint. You can give the hint to the course based optimizer. So nowadays, most of DBMS use their own the optimizer, the automated optimizer. Somebody said this course based optimizer is kind of a brain of the DBMS. It determines the overall performance. This is one of the reasons why Oracle is still popular. However, so I met uh, several one couple of the vice president. Uh, one is the vice president in the Google. The, he just joined for the Android car. The so Google would like to uh, standardize. It's a, it's a copy the system on the on a car. So right now each vendor has their own monitor and the, their interface are the various, all different. For the use their own. And even the model by model, they are different. But uh, Google would like to put their Android system to generate the common and standardize the copy system using Android. So then the, it will be connected and also we can, it may be, if that is good, true, so you have a chance to do your business. Like the, just like the developing app, there might be different. If you develop the app using app on a car, it's different, right? Interface is limited, mostly rely on what? Voice recognition. And the sum of the information is needed when you search the, uh, the nearby restaurant here. So we can uh, use special information. 
But if you search the gas station while you are driving, you, you don't want to go back, right? Instead, you need to go to the, your direction and find and also cheaper one, something like that. Okay? So, their query and the system, even though same types of app, same purpose app, but the different. So, it may be your opportunity. So, but anyway, so he joined uh, uh, last week and I attended the conference and uh, discussed about the, uh, this one, but uh, he and also other couple of the uh, executive level, the person from the West Coast, San Francisco, and Seattle, they said the, in the West Coast, especially Seattle, they are waiting when Amazon buy the Oracle. So they, uh, they, the Fed, they anticipate, they guess the Amazon will buy the Oracle. The problem is the when, so eventually. Because the Oracle is struggling the, nowadays because of the cloud computing environment. So more and more company would like to buy the service. So Amazon is the biggest customer of what? Oracle, right? Because they buy they, the product from the Oracle and MySQL and the so on, then the, they provide the service. Then the customer, they don't have to buy the Oracle, and so they have a chance to select. So eventually, they believe the Amazon will buy the Oracle or not. But Still, Oracle is the top the company in terms of market share. One of the reasons is the optimize. They spend, they put a lot of effort in their optimizer. It's still they're much better than other the DBM systems. Even the 20 years ago, they had the 70, 80 percent accurate the route uh, to access the data. So this is one of the reasons why Oracle is popular. So we are going to see how cost-based optimize. Rule basis so you can decide the rule. For example, Oracle has a 15 different rules. Okay? Like that. You don't have to memorize and uh, just but the cost-based optimizer, we will see how to uh, the how does the uh, the cost-based optimizer is working. Any questions so far? One of the other participants who is from the, I think, the C, someone of the university in Seattle. So he, because you know the Amazon is in the Seattle, and he used a lot of AWS. So he said, don't teach the DBMS database class. So instead, teach cloud. So that's the reason I try to adapt the more and more content from the cloud computing, but this is not the cloud computing class. So what I'm thinking is eventually in the database class, I try to use the GCP. Then the NoSQL, NoSQL database is slightly different. We can use part of the cloud computing service, but the um, database, anyway, the NoSQL or the big data, I try to use the AWS the cloud computing environment, then the student can uh, use the both the major, not Microsoft or Azure, but I heard that recently, Trump government, the, I think the, the, the contract to use the Microsoft or Azure for their government or something, the system. Because of that, uh, their stock price is uh, the freight. It, uh, Microsoft is higher than the uh, Amazon, so Big Eight take the, uh, the first the place of the, because of that deal. So, but I never used the Microsoft Azure, so I'm not sure whether I need to the adapt another cloud computing. So it's getting harder to teach because of changing the computing environment. However. That doesn't mean you can ignore the behind of uh, such a computer, even though you are using the serverless. So I still believe the, at least the computer science major, you should know the uh, computer organization and computer architect, architecture and operating system, as well as uh, the uh, compiler and uh, such a thing. But 
because you are not going to, some of you guys will work for the only the developer, but uh, as if you probably heard that nowadays uh, more and more people change their career uh, through the boot camp. They never learn any program language, but through, through the boot camp, they learn the program languages, sir, then the ghetto job. They're the, if, I'm not sure whether that is true or not. So nowadays, if you have the two or three years experience and uh, through the boot camp to learn the data sciences, uh, so on, so in West Coast, so you can get uh, 150K the initial salary to change. I'm not sure whether that is really true, but uh, it is true. So through the boot camp, so even the many people can change. But uh, your the major and your job is not only just uh, the coding problem, but as a science that you learn. Who knows? Uh, maybe several years later, we may use the different program languages as we we did uh, several years before. Nobody used Python, but nowadays uh, Python is a primary language. So, but if you do not have the, such a fundamental of the computer and uh, behind the computer. Eventually, if you can uh, design the, uh, your cloud service by yourself, definitely uh, you can get the higher position and the better the uh, compensation, but uh, without understanding network security and uh, it's, uh, no way. Cloud is everything, cover everything. So no way to design your the computing environment. So otherwise you need to pay huge money to the Amazon or other the contract to design your the IT infrastructure on cloud. So please do not ignore the, such a the hardware part. So okay, so let's Either course based optimizer or the rule based optimizer. But uh, in this class, we are going to talk about uh, the course based optimizer. Then the output of the query optimizer is the plan to access the data like this. Then the, uh, one of the database services will access the data using the, this plan. Then the return to the user. This is how it works and when you submit the uh, query. This is overall. This is called the query processing. Okay. So there should be basic unit of processing for the query optimizer. Query optimizer, a query processor can process one SQL block. One SQL block means one block means select from where. So if you submit a just like the, this a simple query, it might be okay because it's a one query block. However, you as we discussed. Uh, the, in the SQL, the class SQL part, you may have the such a correlate, query inside the query. So query optimizer segment, query by query, query block by query. So this is query block, this is another query block. At that time, query optimizer used relational algebra operation, expression, relational algebra expression. The, not any professor introduced a relational algebra expression during the, uh, the database course or database design course because practically you don't use the query uh, relational algebra expression. Instead, you can directly code. However, if you try to understand the query processor, especially performance issue, 
definitely you need to understand the query as a relation algebra expression. The reason is that the query optimizer actually the changing the query SQL query into the this one relation algebra expression. The reason is that relation algebra expression show how to access the data. So later from the employee using the this one and the so we will see the more details later and the this. So first thing is decompose into the query block and the query optimizer will process block by block. Okay. I'm going to uh, the quickly go over the sorting part. So when me the when the query optimizer process the such a thing, this is not only problem of the query optimization. It's uh, in general computing. In general computing, if data is uh, sort sorted, it's uh, easy to access. Easy means fast, right? If the student like the if you in mind, I'm not sure the nowadays, but the, when I entered the first grade. Uh, of the elementary school, so the first day I still remember the my the room uh, home room teacher line up by the height. Okay, then assign the number. The shortest one is number one. The next is number two, number three. So because at that time, in one class in my or not right now, but my hometown has uh, 60, 70 students in one class. It's because it's, uh, I'm the kind of generation of a baby boom, so really huge class. But it's totally changed nowadays. I watched the news uh, the, uh, last week in Korea. So one couple on average day have the less than one children on average, which means it's a decline in the population. So 2030, 40, uh, probably the basically the less the population. It's not rate, the really the number of the population will be huge decline. So is it good or bad? It's really bad. Why? The capitalism is based on what? It's a number of consumer. The economy. If you do not have consumer, so all right, it's a, like to think about the, because of the uh, better and uh, better quality of the health care and uh, like the, a lot improvement in medical and so on. So our the age, average age is 80, 90. So people estimate the over 100, okay, the life, the each on average is over 100. So which means. Right now, our the social debt, social security is based on the pension or the such a program, which means, so I pay huge portion of the, my salary will go for the social security. Then, the money will be used for the old people, which means the current the uh, the the old people who receive the such a pension or the social security, they actually the save the money, but the mostly it's based on the current, the young people, they're the income and the, they're the social security, which means when I get old, I should have, we have more and more people. So the old people is like that and the, if we have the decline, it's a real, it's a disaster. Because not many the young people can pay for my the social security. Right? So don't think about the, your money pay for the social security will be bad. No, it's not. This, your money will go for the current older people. Then the, when I get old and uh, mm, the next generation should pay for my the social security, but uh, it's decline, huge decline. So in Korea, so that is a huge problem. Why do I mention about ah yes, sorting? I talk about sorting. Yeah. So when I entered the first grade, so at the time, no way one home teacher take care of the 60, 70 kids even the. Seven, eight years old, so they usually use the, such a lineup every time and sorting. Then easy to manage it, the 60, 70 kids. Okay? So sorting is a sorted data. What indexing is very important though when we are dealing with the data. Then how can make the data sorted? It's a sorting algorithm. So because of that, that, if you have a chance to have a technical interview, 
the like the big company. Ninety-nine percent of the questions from the during the technical interview for data structure. It's not from me. It's uh, the in general. Okay, so hiring department and the technical the recruiter they are using. They officially say the they are using the uh, data structure problem for technical interview. Okay, then one of the important question. Part of the such a technical question is sorting. So a lot of it's a variation. So why why don't you implement the quick sort bubble sort? If you have the two byte of bubble like that, okay, then the, they provide the interface uh, directly code to the like that. Then the, nowadays uh, the I heard uh, many times. So when you submit, then the, it's like the CBT test. They quickly respond. So you fail. The technical interview or this schedule for the next round of the interview like that. So such a the sorting is very important. So in the database, use a lot of such a sorting. So sorting also should be considered for query optimizer. But uh, I'm not going to uh, evaluate and details. But uh, just what kind of sorting? So sort merge is. It's not a problem of the database. It's a problem of database, but you can you definitely learn from the data structure class. So, but database use a lot of such and sorting. And sometimes, not only algorithm, they try to build a little, even 1% improve the performance. It's a huge impact. So, sometimes they are using the temporary space. They create a temporary space, a hard disk drive. Nowadays, they are allocate the memory for the Temporary space for sorting. Okay. So to speed up in hardware, algorithm, and uh, they spend really a lot, a lot of money. And not only for database, in general computing, and any application, and the operating system, and so on. Okay. Sort merge is the, one of the very popular ways. So because we are going to use a, such a sort merge uh, sorting technology in the join. So sort merge means the, if you uh, instead of the sort entire, so grouping, so 10 kids, 10 kids, 10 kids. Why don't you line up by 10? It's easy. But if you line up the, by the height, all 60, 70 students, 70 kids, it takes a really long time. So whether it's uh, the same height, who is uh, shorter, who is uh, higher. So instead, 10 or 5, okay? It's uh, quickly you can the sort by the group, then merge. When you merge, how can you merge? Shortest one, come out, then check, right? Then next, next, like that. That is called a sort merge. So sort merge is kind of divide and conquer approach, so you can do the sort by this, uh, this one. Okay? So database use a lot of such a sort merge. So then, finally, we are going to see the Query optimizer. So this is just a handout, not quiz. So to speed up, I'm going to use the this handout. You can see the for your reminder when you visit the Boston one city, how many different number of them. Similarly, when you access the table, one table. First, uh, we'd like to see how many different ways to access the data. The first one is the S1. Oh, before that, there are uh, the terminology. So we have used it before. But for your reminder, buffering factor is uh, uh, the important blocking factor. Uh, not buffering factor, blocking factor. Blocking factor means what? Number of record per block on average. Okay, and X is the number of level levels of what? Index. Okay, index because it's a tree based. No matter what types of the index you use, it's a tree based. So which means it determines number of a uh, number of the block will be determined by the what level of the index. So that is x. Okay, then the second line the B L one number of a first level index block means the B plus three in the B plus three. All the data pointer will be down to the leaf node. Do you remember? Then we can bottom up and balance. 
So we, and also when we one of one of benefit, one of benefit of using B plus three is range, because it's sorted already. So next, the sibling, sibling. So number of leaf node is important to calculate the, uh, the number of block IO. Then, this is uh, the selectivity and the selection cardinality. So, when we are using the cool space optimizer, cool space optimizer, they are calculating number of IO. But how can they calculate the number of IO? So for example, simply employ how many blocks in employ. They do not know until they really access the employee. So we cannot access the employee. Why? If I can access the employee, we can just access and return the data. So it doesn't make sense. Right? Think about the how many blocks do you have for the employee. So you are going to access the entire employee. That doesn't make sense because we try to guess the estimate how many blocks to access the, the to execute the this query. So we should have the information. Okay? How many rooms, how many the table, okay, that are used for the student or the employee, how many blocks? So we need pre-process the information about the, your database, all the database. So this is called, where is it? Query optimizer accesses such an information where? It's a catalog database. So do you remember catalog database is a metadata information. So DBMS front time, two time, not every time, but the front time, two time, check the database. Employ how many tables? How many blocks for employee? And uh, sometimes they calculate the, this one, this kind of information. Let's say this is the department table. Department table, let's say the DNO is one, two, three, four, five. Five department numbers. Then they are not uniformly distributed. So let's say the employee. Employee has the DNO. So we have 100 employees. They are not like the 20, 20, 20, 20. Real data is like the, sometimes you have 10 DNO1. Okay? And 20. And 3 is most of 50. And the 10 and 20. It's a four and fifty and five like that. It's so one example. Then at that time, the so simple example is when you access employee with the DNO, like the query is a select from employee where DNO is equal to three. For example. Let's say we have index for DNO. Which one is the better? Full brute force way. Brute force. Or using index for with the DNO. In case of three. Indexing. Full tape scan is better. Why? When you are using index, index is another data structure like this. You need to access this one, then table. But if that is just one return, it will be fine. But in case of DNO is three, half of them is already indexed. So you need to access this and this, this and this. Instead, why don't you access all of this? Then we can reduce the IO. Do you remember the one time I mentioned about the cardinality, how data is distributed? If your the data is less than 20% of cardinality, cardinality means the this one, 
percentile. Less than 20, index is better. However, over 20, like the, this one, even, so like the, I check the, your information from the, this. So if I find the student, only one student, I can check the student ID, whatever, and call it, then that's it. However, I need the 90% of student. Okay, I check the one by one, and it takes a long time. Instead, just uh, the ask all student here, okay, without using the information. Just uh, ask whether you uh, are interested, this one, this one. Eventually, I need to access most of the student. So I don't want to, I don't have to use the index. Okay, it takes a long time. So when you are using the index, index, ideal case, is unique, only one data, that fast. But if you access more data, like the, this one, brute force is faster. So which means, when you are doing theory processing, such a distribution of data is also important. Okay, it's a catalog. So at this time, the, this, the such a distribution, like the histogram is a selectivity. Okay, what is the selectivity of this percentile? It's so, exactly the same as the history. Okay. Then, what, this is a percentile, 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 percentile. So if you have the thousand employees, what is the real the number of data? 10 times, 10% 10 times, a thousand is so 100. 100 employed, 200 employed, 500 employed. So that number is the selection cardinality. So you can see the selectivity times the number of record is the selection cardinality. Okay? So we are going to use uh, such a selection cardinality to calculate the number of IO. So what, when I use the, this query, how many employees will be accessed? Okay, then number of block will be calculated eventually. So that is called the selection cardinality. So one, later we will see the, such an example. One common the mistake is index is uh, fast always. No, not always. Sometimes brute force way is uh, faster. So what is the threshold the to divide? Love rule of thumb. The it's a just a, it twenty percent is kind of guideline. If they are the card selection selectivity is less than twenty percent, you'd better use the index. Otherwise, if like the this, you can use the brute force way. Another example is the main female, fifty percent. 50%. Even though index takes a longer time, always you do better, you use a brute force way. Because it's a half and half. We will see such a real example later. So, right now we can understand the, such a, the terminology. So, that always we are going to calculate the what? Number of IO, number of block. Okay, so first approach, finally, we can start. This one is the access one table. How to access one table with the given information. So first approach is the brute force way. There are different names of the brute force. Sometimes it's called the full table scan. And also it's called the linear search. It of them is fine. Okay? So linear search, if your block is a number of block is B, what is divided by two? So this is the average number of block to access the table brute force or table scan or linear search. Okay, so on average, on average. What about the, but worst case, it can be the B. You need to access the all the block, okay? 
Sometimes you need to use that this, but most of the time, root force is B over true on average. Somebody may be complaining. So minimum one, maximum B. So like the this. But think about the B O notation. We are going to use higher, highest degree, so we can ignore the constant value. But sometimes we need to count. So in this case, in general, the B over 2. So this is the first case. This option, this option will be considered every time. Right? This is the always possible. No matter what type of table you have, it's ordered, non-ordered, indexed, who are not indexed, this way is always considered. The second approach, in case table is ordered, in case table is ordered, we can use what? Binary search, right? So binary search, what is the, how many time? Okay. How many blocks do we need to access? So it's a low, Number of block. This is a B. B number of block. So based on two, right? Then, if you find the data, I index. Using this one, you need to access the table. Uh, the So this is the unique case. If data is unique, we can do this one. However, think about if this one is not unique. Okay? It's ordered but not unique. Like the DNO. If this one table, the employee table is sorted by DNO, it's one 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 two 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 three three three. So in case it's not, so you need to access this amount of data. And how can we determine this? At the time, we can use this selectivity. OK, so how can we calculate the, this one? In case of unique, otherwise, non-unique. So first, we need to find the beginning of the data. Then, how many? The S is the selection cardinality. Okay, total, for example, 100 or 120 for the D and O is equal to 3. Okay, so selection cardinality is SL, right? S, in this notation, S. And this is the number of record we need to divide by blocking factor. We need to calculate the block, the blocking factor. Then, this one does not include the first block, okay? So we need to take out one. And always, when we consider the block, it should be the ceiling function. So, once again. Select a service from employed where the T and O is equal to 3. Okay, we'd like to uh, optimize uh, this one to calculate uh, this. So, table is block. We have B number of block. Okay, so full table scan, brute first, B over 2, no problem. But if we use the D and O, so D is ordered by D and O, so like uh, this 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and do this, okay? What we want to do is, uh, first we need to find uh, this block, right? So how many block? It's a low B based on 2. It's a binary search, the complexity, okay? To find first block, this one. So we take the low B based on 2. Then, we need to access this 
this and this. Right? How can we determine the how many blocks? We are going to use histogram. Like that this. How many block? Uh, how many record? S A is times the number of record. That is S. So this is S num number of record. So this is the S number of record. But we are not going to count the number of record. We need to count what? Number of blocks. Okay? Block divided by blocking factor. Then we can have in this example three. Okay? So that is the S divided by blocking factor. But even though you need the one record, you have one record, it should be one block. So that is the reason it's the ceiling function. Then this block is overlap one time, right? When you search, it's counted. And when you retrieve the all S, it's counted. So two times. So we need two minus one. So that is a non-unique case. Non-unique case, we can use the, this amount of blocks. This is the cost function. So cost function of S1 or S2. So in case of binary search, we can calculate the, this way. So let it pass. So next time, we the first two without using index. The, the other primary index and cluster index, most important part is a B plus 3 index, secondary index, okay? So we will see that. Then next, so not only one table, we are going to join. So join, select join. In case of join, what is the course function we are going to? Okay. Any question, please bring it back to the next class so we will continue for the theory process. And continue.